my name is David Salasio Poku. I'm currently a farmer. I saw somebody mention that that was one of their goals. Uh, so glad to see that. And also co-founder of Going Gold Farms. And also recently um, a fellow at the Stanford Digital Civil Society Lab where exploring issues around African food sovereignty. So to start off, I want to start with the definition of social entrepreneurship. I picked this up from Shopify actually has a definition that I like, and it says that it's doing business for a social cause. It might also be referred to as altruistic entrepreneurship, interesting. And then it combines commerce and social issues in the way that improves the lives of people connected to a cause. And their success usually is not measured in profit alone. Um, but then you ask the question, shouldn't all entrepreneurship be social then? Because everything should benefit people. So I tend to generally look at it as entrepreneurship should, should be social. Now I mention this because I think there's a strong connection to open science and the principles that exist within open science and openness. And I think the Turing way um, really highlights some of these aspects. If you've not checked out the resource, you should check it out. I'm sure Malvika and team have mentioned this several times. But when we talk about collaboration, we talk about project design, we talk about reproducibility, communication, outreach, ethics. All these to some extent are leading to social outcomes that benefit not just a group of individuals, but anybody. We're talking about accessibility. And I think anyone who practices this ends up building up skills that end up being very relevant to social entrepreneurship. So now I'm going to talk about my journey, and I hope through this, you'll be able to see how what I ended up doing to some extent led me to the path where I could feel a little bit more comfortable or adventurous to be in a social entrepreneur. So I'll start from Ghana. I lived there for about 17 years of my life, lower middle class, Christian family, farming family. Um, and then I was privileged to get a scholarship to go to the last two years of high school in Costa Rica. Um, ended up being in class with students from over 65 different countries, which started exposing me to um, the world and areas around commonalities that we had and also differences. But I think the heart of that became that we are all very similar. We all care about generally similar issues. And, and that was a life-changing moment. I did six years in the US where I did my undergrad and my master's in biology and then computer science. And also did some research with UNICEF and a lot of civic engagement work. And I think in all of that, starting to understand how what I was learning was going to be helpful to um, different individuals, different communities, whatever I did should have an impact on communities. Um, I then returned to Ghana and worked at a tech incubator. And one of the things that I quickly became a champion of because that really didn't exist was the local open data advocates. And the reason was because at least in Ghana at that time, a lot of the entrepreneurs were trying to build products or trying to work with data, but most of the data sets were not contextualized to Ghana and most of Africa. So I became the person who was pushing this forward, um, which then led me into the open data space. I joined Open Knowledge Foundation, which is an organization that works in promoted open data principles um, and was fortunate enough to become um, the data, what I call a data plumber, helping journalists, civil society organizations, researchers think about how open data principles, openness can be embedded into the work that they do. Um, at the heart of that was really recognizing that accessibility in terms of solving issues was, was a big thing to pay attention to. And I think in there, became the values that now have led me to um, leaving to focus on building a farm. And, and the reason why I left to become a farmer or build Going Gold Farm was because I saw a problem that across the world, we have an issue around how we're going to feed the world. Farmers are a very important group of people who are going to be leading this. But at the same time, most of the time, they don't have access to the skills and the resources that we need to push this forward. And so Going Gold, um, it's aiming to figure out ways to do that with farmers in resource constraints environments. Um, and so I've talked about social entrepreneurship, I've talked about open science, and I think at the heart of all of those are community. You hear that being repeated in, in these two spaces. You hear about the commons where there's 
collective ownership of some kind of resource that is accessible. And then you hear about society. And I think for anyone who um, believes in these principles, who practices this, who uses this, social entrepreneurship is also an avenue for you to explore because you are definitely an expert and some of the challenges that you deal with or you have mastered will become relevant in there. Um, so a little bit about growing gold farms. We have four main phases that we want to go through. Um, we want to consistently produce healthy and affordable food using sustainable and accessible practices. We want to build the capacity of other smallholder farmers to produce sustainably. And smallholder farmers, because we believe that they actually um, build or have the ethos around sustainability, food sovereignty that is needed in this world. And we want to make smallholder farms and farmers more resilient to processing of their produce. And then finally, we want to turn farms into spaces of education, innovation, leisure, and fun. And how um, does a day or a week look like? Um, in a day or in a week, I'm reading, or my team and I, we're reading about ways of implementing research um, to this problem. So everything from reading about breeding planting and about GMO and why that leads to outcomes that actually doesn't benefit communities or even looking at science and way to make data much more accessible or helping my dad who's a farmer for over 40 years but doesn't really collect data in the way that makes it much easier for him to appreciate that and make that much more accessible to him. Um, so putting together and enable the team of innovators. So that level of collaboration, we can do things alone. So how do we bring in teams of different experts to do this? And then believing in ourselves um, each and every day. So I just wanted to say, so social entrepreneurship, should I do it? There, there are four things that I put down that may be helpful if you want to consider this. Um, you see a social itch that no one you know is solving. Yeah, so that may be one factor to consider. Another, if there's no fixed salary, no problem. Um, that's, that's something we can talk about later, but it's not um, the comfort of having a salary in, in other spaces may not always be guaranteed. You tend to be a generalist by nature, but a specialist by necessity. Um, so you do everything and then you specialize in specific areas that you want when it's needed. And if not now, when? There's something that you've always wanted to explore. And maybe now's the time you try it out and you figure out whether this is a path to pursue or maybe it was a waste of your time. So at least you know that. So these are some things that you may consider if you want to pursue this path. Um, and then, then I want to wrap up with three anecdotes that I've picked up that I believe have helped me so far and even other people that I advise who are pursuing the entrepreneurship path. So being versatile, um, and I said generalize and then specialize. I think social entrepreneurship leverages on the ability to generalize, being interested in different things, different issues, and how to solve that, and then finding a way to, to specialize in whatever that issue is. Um, and again, so for me, being able to understand data, but being able to understand product development, being able to understand different societies and cultures and the way that they behave, and then specializing on a specific skills. I think social entrepreneurship gives you the ability to start off as a journalist and then look at an issue and where you want to specialize in that. Um, I think to do this, you need to see people. At the heart of this is people that you're working with. They are either dealing with issues or they are innovating and being able to start with them as people before whatever technology, whatever solution is important, but also letting yourself be seen um, as opposed to either being in academia or even being in a lab. Uh, being a social entrepreneur, you need to be out there. You need to be talking to customers. You need to be talking to communities. You need to be building that relationship, but you also have to let people see you um let them know you for who you are um and so that's important and, and that's one of the anecdotes that i've picked over time and then this is kind of uh, a joke but ground your, your identity in your job actually do not ground your identity in your job um your job will go but who you are as a person wouldn't and i think being able to find ways to um thrive outside your job, whether it's as a social entrepreneur, whether it's as somebody who is in a company, who is in a university, in a lab, letting your identity not be grounded in that because that could always change. It's a valuable thing that I've learned. Um, in the past, maybe six months, there have been many opportunities that I have failed at, I have not been accepted in, and learning 
and that that is not what my identity is. My identity is beyond that has been something that's kept me going. So with that, my last thing that I'll say is that breathe. The most important thing, especially in this time of COVID, <laughs> is your life. Everything else is replaceable. And I think if you want to go down the path of a social entrepreneur or any other career option, just making sure that you're living a life that is balanced, that you can um, thrive and, and be healthy is what will keep you going in whatever path you take. So stay human and be open. And with that, I will end here.